I am thrilled to welcome back to the show Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator, thank you so much for joining us. My pleasure. Uh, so, Senator, thank you. I'd love to just geek out on infrastructure to start, if you don't mind. So there are these two tracks in Congress when it comes to passing this infrastructure bill. There's a bipartisan bill that invests in you know hard infrastructure, roads, bridges, et cetera. And then there are these separate talks uh, by Democrats about using the reconciliation process to patch a much larger bill that includes other critical spending to address climate change, healthcare priorities, et cetera. Can you give us just a sense of like what the latest is with that reconciliation track? Well, I think you... You gave us a good overview, Tommy. Um, on one hand, you have 20 some odd Democrats and Republicans working on a very narrow uh, infrastructure proposal, which deals with what we traditionally call uh, infrastructure. Uh, what we don't know at this point is how they're going to fund it. Uh, and they are still debating it. So I can't tell you because they don't know yet. Right. Uh, but it sounds to me uh, what we are hearing is might be an increase in the gas tax, might be a fee on electric vehicles. It might be, they give it a, a fancy term, but I think it sounds to me like uh, infrastructure privatization, not a new idea, but a very bad idea. Mm -hmm. uh, so the problem I have with what they're doing is A, it is too small even to deal with roads and bridges. It's about one quarter of what Biden wanted. Number two, uh, their funding appears to be at this point very regressive and anti-working class. Uh, as I think most of your viewers know, study after study has shown that you got billionaires out there, some of the wealthiest people in this country in a given year pay zero in federal income tax. You got large multinational corporations making huge profits, pay zero in federal income tax. They, for their own political reasons or whatever, choose not to deal with that. They rather have user fees coming down heavy on working people obviously not something I am sympathetic to. We, on the other hand, are kind of taking a different look at what we mean infrastructure. Infrastructure is not just roads and bridges. You know, I could say to you, what's the infrastructure of your program? You know, what's your staffing line? Where's the money mm -hmm. coming from? That's infrastructure. Mm -hmm. And when I look at infrastructure, it is what are the foundations that a modern society needs to run and run well? And when you look at the world that way, obviously you got to deal with climate. I mean, how irresponsible, how insane it would be if we didn't deal with climate uh, when the future of the planet is at stake. Uh, if you're talking about a modern society, how do you not deal with childcare and education and higher education, making sure that we have the best educated workforce in the world? How do you not deal with housing when you got close to 600,000 people homeless 18 million households spending 50% of their limited incomes uh, for housing, et cetera, et cetera. So, you know, health care, uh, you know, I think it's imperative that we expand Medicare to cover dental, eyeglasses, and, and hearing aids. Uh, we are the only major country on earth not to have paid family and medical leave. Is that acceptable? I think not. Yeah. So those are some of the issues that I believe have got to be included in a serious reconciliation bill. Yeah, look, I mean, everything you're saying makes total sense to me. I do think just sort of process-wise, there's some concern among progressives about whether some of the more moderate Democrats will actually support this follow-on reconciliation bill, because I remember well when Joe Manchin shot a bullet through a cap-and-trade bill, right? So it makes me wonder a bit about his willingness to aggressively Let me tackle- Let me say Yes, please. And you, you might want to, you know, get Senator Schumer on, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, leadership is very, very clear. There ain't going to be a small bipartisan infrastructure bill that gets to the floor unless there is an ironclad agreement that there will be support in very specific ways for a larger reconciliation bill. Now, you might ask, why in God's name do you need two bills? And the answer is, I haven't a clue. <laughs> but there are some people who are wedded to the idea they love uh, bipartisanship, you know, and so that's the way it is. Uh, but to answer your question, it, you know, as best that I can understand, we will not accept, I will not accept uh, a smaller bill at the expense of something larger. That's great news. I mean, I, I saw some House members have even suggested withholding a vote on the bipartisan bill until there's some agreement on reconciliation. Do you think that's a good idea? Is that necessary? We'll see if it's necessary or not. But what I can tell you is uh, it's a backup plan, if you like. Uh, but 
you know, given the crises that we face today, and I gotta say this, to me, this is legislation not only dealing with roads and bridges and water and, and uh, childcare and paid family and medical leave and expanding Medicare. Tommy, you know what is even more significant than all of that? It is whether we're going to regain the faith of the American people in their democracy. Because let me tell you, we're going to have a vote on that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. If anybody out there, they say, oh, well, Biden's doing a good job. You got Nancy in the House and you got Chuck in the Senate. We don't have to worry. If that's your attitude, man, you are dead, dead wrong. Worry. Worry a whole lot. There's an election coming up in 2022. And if anyone thinks that the Democrats were shooing to retain control of the House and the Senate, you are absolutely wrong. What we have got to show is millions of especially working people, black and white and Latino, Native American, Asian American, that in fact, government can work for them, not just the billionaire class. Let me give you an example of what I mean. Next month, struggling working class families all over this country are gonna get a check or whatever it may be, $300 or so per child as part of the child tax credit that we passed. Now, you know what that means? You got two kids, your mm -hmm. family's making forty dollars or $50,000 a year. You know what that means to get $600 a month to everything. help you raise your kids? Yeah. It means everything. It means that we're going to take a real dent out of childhood poverty in America. And we got to continue to do that, to show working class people that government can, in fact, stand up for them and not just wealthy campaign contributors. Yeah, I, mean, I agree with that as well. I mean, yeah, I'm glad you brought up this voting rights bill. You know, the, Senator Schumer is going to put a, a vote on the floor, I believe, tomorrow on S1, the For the People Act. Um, Senator Manchin has said he doesn't support the bill in its current form. Do you think there's a chance the Senate votes on an amended version that sort of includes the changes that he wants? And and just more yeah. broadly, like, you know, you, you know, you said Democrats, if you're not paying attention to this, like time to wake up. What do you say to Democrats who feel like, man, we worked our tails off to win those seats in Georgia to give Democrats right. control of the Senate. H how are people like Manchin and Kirsten Sinema and others not not fighting like hell for this? Like, this seems Look, so urgent to us. Well, that, that's a long, long discussion, which maybe at another time we can have. Uh, I do not respond positively to people who say, you know, we worked our tails off. I worked my tail off. I'm sure you did. We all did. Millions of people did. But you know what? The other side is working their tail as well and in many ways, even more effectively than our siders. Uh, what we are taking on now is a Republican party. And, and for older people, please note, this is not the old Republican party. It's not the Ronald Reagan party. It's not the Bush party. This is a whole new version of a party, which is based on the big lie that Trump actually won the election by a landslide. Uh, and that um uh, that there is massive fraud and that uh they need to quote upon you know uh have election integrity which really means taking millions of denying millions of people uh, often people of color lower lower income people young people but uh, taking away their right to vote that is what's going on right now and if these guys win that will only be cemented and uh, broadened. So we are fighting right now, not just for strong social policy, working families, maybe even more basic. We are fighting to make sure that this country remains a democracy. Yeah, I mean, you're right. And this is like a very emotional issue. I've definitely lost my cool when talking about the filibuster or the For the People Act or or Joe Manchin's vote. I've seen members of Congress accuse him of you know supporting white supremacy. Do you have advice for people on, on what the best way is to communicate with Joe Manchin or others who might be a sticking point here, like based on I, your I, experience? Well, I mean, people can do what they want. Yes, I, you know, it, it, you know. Uh, what I can simply tell you from my vantage point here is enormous pressure in every way is being put on Manchin. The real answer, longer term, is not to have only 50 Democrats in the Senate. Yeah. You know, and then we're not dependent on, you know, right now, anybody. It's not just Manchin. You can go forward and say, hey, I'm not supporting this bill. Forget it. That's it. And it's all over. So what we need to do is to, uh, you know, build that strong grassroots political movement, which will elect a hell of a lot more than 50 Democrats. Um, so that's kind of where we're at. 
Yeah. So you mentioned this the question of how to pay for this infrastructure bill. I mean, stepping back a bit, you know, there was this ProPublica story that you also mentioned about how the richest people in the country pay basically nothing in taxes, right? And they avoid these taxes legally. They just get all their compensation oh, via stock, is- right? So, yep. wh- so you've been talking about this you, literally your whole career. Do you have a proposal for how to amend the tax code to actually sure. get at this wealth and not just income? We have a number of proposals. <laughs> yes, we do. I mean, including uh, a wealth tax, which basically says that we're going to tax the incredible wealth uh, that a handful of people in this country have. Uh, but we have to raise the corporate tax rate. We have to do away with Trump's uh, tax the bill that he passed a few years ago. Um, we have to, th- there's an area that Biden has talked about a study that came out recently, and, and the guy who was head of the IRS was a Trump appointee of all things. Uh, this guy says right now that there is hundreds of billions of dollars uh, in lost tax revenue that wealthy people and large corporations are not paying. Because they have, in many cases, an army of accountants and lawyers uh, who can help them, uh, prevent them from paying uh, their taxes, and they outgun the IRS. They outgun the IRS. So by investing in the IRS, getting more people who know what they're doing to take on these corporations, the estimate is, I think, for every dollar you invest, you gain seven dollars in lost revenue from the very wealthy, and that's wow. what we should be doing. Yeah. Uh, last question for you. I mean, I, I imagine a lot of people are listening to this. They feel the urgency of, of all these big issues. What? How should we focus our attention? Like, what do you think people should be doing right now to help you pass the agenda you talked about in this interview? I think one of the things that bothers me, and it has a lot to do with corporate media in general, is there is not enough discussion about the pain that working class families, black, white, Latino, are experiencing right now. We don't talk about it. Half of our people in America are working paycheck to paycheck. How's that? That means at the end of a week of hard work, you have nothing in the bank. You're living paycheck to paycheck. A paycheck stops coming. You're in serious trouble and and your family may lose their housing. Uh, We got millions of people working for starvation wages. Uh, We got 90 million people who are uninsured or underinsured. We have kids, as you know, young people with outrageous levels of student debt. We have a childcare system, which is beyond embarrassing. And we can create millions of jobs by addressing climate change and rebuilding our crumbling infrastructure. So I think the message has got to be that in this pivotal moment in American history, we've got to reaffirm people's belief that their government can work for them. And the way you do that is by delivering the goods, by delivering the goods, by people seeing with their own eyes that real change is taking place in their lives. I use the child tax credit is one of many examples. You raise the minimum wage, at least 15 bucks an hour, and make it easier for workers to join unions. People see that as real change. Can you know what it means? Right now in my state, uh, which is probably about average, the uh, a family is spending $15,000 a year for child care. $15,000 a year. Wow. Maybe, you make, maybe you're a single mom making 45,000. One third of your income goes to child care. Insane. Deal with that. Have people paying no more than 7% of their income or less for trial care. All of those things is what we've got to focus on. So to my mind, to answer your question, Tommy, and I think we got to talk about it more, is we need a government that works for ordinary people and not just the very rich. And when you say that, that covers everything from child care to expanding Medicare so elderly people kind of have a dentures in their mouth when they chew their food. That's what it means, creating a government that works for all of us, not just the few. Well, thank you for that advice. Uh, Thanks for fighting for this agenda, Senator Sanders, and for doing the show. Thank you very much.